Hey guys, let me go ahead and show you how to do a couple of problems on Achieve in section 4.2. Now yours will be slightly different from mine, but should be similar. Uh, number seven is a good question. It's, it's a little tricky. Uh, involves a, an equation with an absolute value. So anytime you have an absolute value in there, mine is 14x plus the absolute value of 13x plus 1. We know absolute values are always piecewise defined functions. So the absolute value of 13x plus 1, it's merely 13x plus 1 anytime x is greater than or equal to negative 1 over 13. But that absolute value of 13x plus 1 has to be the negative of the group 13x plus 1 anytime x is a value that would cause the inside to be negative. Well, I know at negative 1 over 13, this group is equal to 0. At any number to the right of that, this group is positive, so the absolute value does nothing. Any number to the left of negative 1 over 13, the inside's negative, so the absolute value just acts as the negative on the group. Now, that impacts the function at f of x as follows. Anytime x is a number greater than or equal to negative 1 over 13, my original function is just 14x plus 13x plus 1, or 27x plus 1. Anytime x is a number less than negative 1 over 13, my equation becomes 14x minus 13x plus 1, which gives me x minus 1. Now, in either scenario, it really ends up not mattering for the critical points because I know both of these are linear functions. So the derivatives are merely constants. The derivative of 27x plus 1 is 27. The derivative of x minus 1 is 1. Neither one of those could ever equal zero. So you're not going to get any critical points the normal way. Normally we get critical points by setting the derivative equal to zero. This derivative can never equal zero. However, you are going to get critical points by finding whenever this function has a sharp point. And you say, sharp point. We're supposed to remember absolute value functions always have sharp points. I went ahead and graphed this one out for you. We have 14x plus the absolute value of 13x plus 1. If I look at the graph of that, you can see that you do have that sharp point, and that sharp point is at the value when x is negative 1 over 13. To the left of that point, we just have your linear function with a slope 1, y equals x minus 1. To the right of that, you have your linear function 27x plus 1. So forever and ever before that, your derivative is 1. After that, your derivative is 27. The graph of your derivative would be a step function there. You'd say, well, it's always equal to y equals 1 before x is equal to negative 1 13th. After that, it's 27. So there would be a discontinuity in the graph of the derivative, which means for an instant, your derivative function does not exist at negative 1 13th. So we can say, okay, that's where there has to be a critical point. It's the sharp point for the derivative fails to exist. So I just say the critical point in this function is at negative 1 13th. You'll see I've went ahead and entered it in, and that's what the system wants. Now let me talk to you about the next one. Number 19, I'll have to report this problem. Uh, it does have an error in it. And let me talk to you about that error. Uh, I was right, it's wrong. So it's saying I'm wrong, I promise you, I'm not wrong. Let's talk about why. So the problem it gave me is y is equal to nine on the square root of x squared plus one minus eight x. And we're supposed to find the maximum and minimum values on the closed interval zero to eight. So of course, you can say the extreme value theorem means we're going to test for any maximum or minima on this interval, either at the endpoints or at any critical point within them. So I have to try to find the critical point. I go ahead and I take my derivative here, critical points when the first derivative is equal to zero. We have, uh, we know that this group is to the one half power, the square root, same thing as the one half power. So I brought the one half down in front, got the nine over two times x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half power. Chain rule says times the derivative of the inside, we get the 2x there. Of course, the derivative of minus 8x is minus 8. Now in this first term, I went ahead and canceled the 2 out that I was multiplying with the 2 in the denominator. And then this term simplified to be 9x over the square root of x squared plus 1. 
From that, we have to subtract out the eight and set it equal to zero to find the critical points. Now you can say, well, okay, that's gonna give me, if I move eight to the right-hand side when this fraction is equal to eight, then I went ahead and multiplied by the root on each side to get nine X is equal to eight times the square root of X squared plus one. Then from that step to this step, I just went ahead and squared both sides. So now I have 81 X squared is equal to 64 times the group X squared plus one to the first. Now I know I would have a, an X squared term on each side. Let's subtract out 64 X squared on both sides. That leaves me 17 X squared is equal to the 64 on the right. Then I can say I need to solve for X by dividing by 17 on each side. And then we take the square root of both sides. And in this case, I only care about the positive root since all X values have to be between zero and eight. So I say the square root of 64 is eight, and then I have the square root of 17 in the denominator. Now, our only values of X that we need to evaluate for maximum or minimum values are going to be the endpoints or this critical point within. So you'll see I have it set up, and I know that I'm evaluating into the original function. Now, when I plug a zero into that original function, obviously you don't even need to really worry about that, but if a zero is stored in for X, you're just gonna have nine times the square root of one, and then minus zero, you're gonna get a nine for that. If I plug an eight in for X, eight store X, and then I type it into that original function, then you can say you'll get the 8.560. Now, if I do the eight over the root of 17, and I store that in for X, and then I say, now let's type in the original function. You'll see I get the 4.123. Now, clearly, the minimum value here is 4.123. The maximum should be nine. Uh, the answer that Achieve is currently wanting for the maximum for this problem is the 8.56. That's wrong. Uh, so if, if you get to this problem and need me to correct the maximum for you, just let me know. Now, you're also, if you're, if you're not getting it and you want to get it on your own without me cor manually correcting it for you, you might just put in the right-hand endpoint. It's going to want that one for the maximum. The answer should be nine. You'll see here that I put the nine in, it's not wanting it. If I wanted to get credit for this as of now, this is the wrong answer, but if I put in 8.560, watch it give me credit for it. It's gonna say, hey, you got it right. That's not good. So I will ask for this uh, question to be corrected. In the meantime, you could either ask me to correct it for you with the correct maximum in here, of the left-hand endpoint, or just wait for the uh, correction to come from the Achieve staff. One way or the other, we'll get it for you. Uh, excellent question. Uh, please let me know if you have any others. I'm glad to help.